Hi, welcome to IBC 2019. I'm Joe O'Halloran, Editor-in-Chief of Rapid TV News, and I'm here with Conrad Clemson, recently appointed CEO of Editure. Welcome, Conrad. Joe, it's good to be here. Now, it's crazy times in the video and TV industry right now, with it seems not a week goes by without a launch of a direct-to-consumer service. Absolutely. But also, if we look at the meat and drink of broadcast with news and sports, and just the general industry, it seems that everything's up in the air. How do you see the general trends? You know, there's a lot of moving parts right now in the industry, and it's funny, if you look around in just the state of IBC right now, wow, it's, it's crowded, it's busy, and everybody's buzzing with a lot of the changes that are going on. And you know, if you think about the big trends in the industry, I'd start here. Number one is the level of consolidation that we've seen going on in the industry, and that's starting all the way at the top with what we've seen with the likes of Disney and Comcast and uh, the major operators coming together and creating these massive content houses. You know, the second really interesting trend that I see going on is a fundamental change in business models. We're seeing how the relationship between vendors and content producers and end consumers is changing. Some of this is coming in in the form of how we do business together, how we do pricing together, and how we bring things out in the marketplace. And you know, then the last big change is all of these new technology pieces that are changing in the marketplace. You've got 5G, you've got the move to the cloud, you've got the move to these new recurring revenue models, and when you bring all these things together, you know, it really makes for an interesting set of opportunities, but also transitions in the marketplace. Look, you walk around IBC here, there's a million slick demos and people who are showing concepts that, well, they're just not quite real. That's not how we roll here. Again, we're here to solve our storytellers' problems. Um, and the last one I tell you is, we're really thinking about how we can move forward to give our creatives choice in what they're doing. You know, I've been in the video industry for a long time. This is kind of my first um, time in the seat directly in this marketplace. And I'll tell you what I see that I don't like. There are a lot of our vendor partners who are out there who get their customers to buy their software because they have to. That's not how we roll at EditShare. At EditShare, our customers buy our software because they want to. Now, well, you say you've been in the video industry a long time, Conrad, but you've not been sat in the seat of CEO for that long a time. You've also, as a company, received significant recent investments. That's right. Tell us more about the personal vision you have sure, as abso CEO. Absolutely. You know, it's funny, this is uh, my 15th IBC. Um, however, it's my first IBC in Hall 7, here where we're making the technology that enables the media environment. And you know, when, um, when I started working with our new investors back in January and started looking at EditShare, I saw what I felt was a real diamond in the rough. Here's a company that was really bootstrapped by two great founders and nurtured and grown over the last 15 years. And Andy, Tara, their partner James, they did an amazing job of bringing EditShare from almost nothing to over $20 million a year in revenue. But what I saw here was a company with a lot more potential. You know, when I look at what I see inside of EditShare, I see amazing technology. And not just technology that's good for today, but this is well-architected technology that we can scale into the future. And while we're a small firm, this is a firm that does $20 million a year in revenue globally. So we're operating on a global scale with a small company and a small budget. With the injection of capital that we've had, with the strengthening of the management team, we have the ability to scale this business. So what are we gonna do exactly? I'll tell you what we're gonna do. We've already been making investments in our go-to-market strategy. We're gonna to continue to build on that. And as we build on that, we're gonna make sure that we don't walk quietly anymore. We're gonna get out in front of our customers. We're gonna get out in front of the market like we are here and we're gonna tell our story, and we're gonna tell it clearly and with authenticity. And we're gonna put more fuel into the engineering team to build our products faster and better and bring our innovation into the marketplace. And I'll give you one specific example of that. You know, as we made this transition from 
a founder-owned and operated business to a more corporate structure, Andy Liebman, who's run the business for the first 15 years, stepped aside and has taken on the role of Chief Strategy Officer. Now, unleashing Andy's creativity to really focus on what are we doing, where are we going, and thinking about our customers on the other side of the lens and the stories they're trying to tell and abstracting the complexity so they can do that, that's exciting. What's always exciting and a very unfair question to that, you've got a vision. Normally I ask people what's their 12 month vision. Is it absolutely impossible to look that far given the velocity, the changes in the industry and the rate of change is so great these days? Is it so difficult to like look further than six months? You know, it, um, I'll tell you, uh, at, at one level I would go, gee, it's impossible to predict the future. You know, on the other hand, what I, I'll tell you how we think about the business. Um, you know, we try to run our business on multiple cadences. Every week we get together and we go, how are we doing on the tactical things we're trying to get done now? How are we, and, and when we think about that in the third quarter of 2019, we as a team get around and go, are we building the right launch pad to really grow this company? But then we look out over two quarters and we see, hey, we've had spectacular growth in the first half of this year, and we're laying down the foundation both in terms of how we support our customers and what it is that we're trying to move in the marketplace and move forward. But I'll tell you something else. We have a vision for how the industry is going to develop. And some of that is around pure technology, but a big piece of that is around, I would say, a more set of core principles. We put our customers first. We build open software. I'll come back and say that third point again. We build our software and our customers buy it because they want to. And when we look and think about the things we're doing driving forward, we're thinking about the transition that our customers are making as they're trying to reach and create direct-to-consumer services or reality shows for um, uh, of various customer networks. Or in some cases, they're educational or corporate customers. They all have a challenge and we're thinking about solving those challenges both today and tomorrow. One last point I'll make on that is, you know, we see a world where we're moving into a cloud environment. Maybe we're ready today, maybe we're not, but I don't think any of us would argue with the inevitability of moving in that direction. The traffic is out there, the traffic is happening, and I saw a really interesting statistic earlier this week uh, at the Devoncroft Summit, in fact, you know, this year, 80% of the bits on the network are video bits. Okay, all of those bits are coming from our customers and we're gonna help them continue to grow those bits to get out there and reach their customers with the kind of stories that their customers care about. And just wait till there's more 4K. Whoa, hey, I'll tell you something. You know, we see 4K happening right now. I am, I am amazed at the number of 4K projects we have out there. But our customers are moving beyond that. You know, they're asking us, talk to us about Dolby Vision, talk to us about HDR. Um, they're beginning to think, what are the geometries gonna look like when we move to 8K? But the other thing that we're finding our customers thinking more and more about is also the screens they're gonna show up on. Sometimes they need to show up on 85 inch flat screens. Sometimes we're showing up on a movie screen. But just as easily, we're showing up on somebody's mobile device. And by the way, that can be in uh, portrait mode or landscape mode. It's a complicated environment out there, but our job is to abstract that all away and let them focus on what's the story they want to tell and we'll enable the technology to get there. Well, we look forward to seeing you do that job. Conrad, thank you very much. Thank you, it's an excellent talking to you and let's enjoy the rest of IBC. Thank you too, and thank you for watching.